Why hello there, welcome back to my channel. It's great to have you here once again. But if it's your first time here, hi, how are you? Great, how's the family? Awesome, the cat? Don't have one. All right, cool, dog? Dead. All right, bless. Anyways, <laughs> if you like what you hear and you like what you see, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and of course, leave me a comment down below right at the end with all your thoughts, opinions, and suggestions. I'd love to hear them. Well, 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 well. So it looks like Tim Dillon has finally broken his silence and decided to give us his thoughts, feelings on the whole Brian Callan debacle that happened, what, was it last year, before that last year? But whatever, you know what it is, isn't it? Was Brian Callan actually the first person to get canceled out of the LA comedy scene? No, it was actually Chris Lee, right? Chris Lee and Brian Callan. Wait a minute, it doesn't really matter. Tim Dillon has finally let us know how it feels to be accosted and cornered in a Bitcoin conference and asked to explain how he feels about the Brian Callan allegations. And um, it must be a really awkward situation to be in, especially if you're not actually Brian Callan's friend, right? Because from what we know of their relationship, they don't really have one. They've met each other maybe on the podcast a couple of times I think Tim Dillon might have been on TFAT K with Brian once or twice but Tim Dillon was on there more often with Brendan doing co-hosting um, gigs when Brian Callan ironically was off filming the Goldbergs and doing his spin-off scored which is just mad in it to think how far he's fallen during this whole debacle right his entire career that he worked so hard to kind of you know get to this point was taken away from him at the point where he finally started to feel like hey I've got my feet under the table right because if you if you're familiar with the T Fat K law, you would know that Brian Callan never really wanted to be a professional stand up comedian in the sense that he was touring and you know doing all that malarkey and filming specials all the time. He kind of really wanted to be an actor first, and he just happened to be really talented and really gifted at doing stand up comedy, right? It just happened to come second nature to him. I still think you know, I'm probably the minority here, but I really do think Brian Callan's stand up is really good. It's just a shame that, similar to Bobby Lee, he doesn't write a lot of new material, he kind of has that perspective where he sort of prefers to perform his greatest hits when he on the stage as opposed to writing new material each special that he does which can kind of make his content and his material a little bit dated but again everyone kind of picks their lane in that regard but he never really wanted to be a you know career stand-up he kind of wanted to be a Hollywood actor and obviously throughout his career he's had some decent gigs here and there but for the most part it never really worked out for him this kind of story that he always tells on TFAT K about him you know being told that he was going to be the next Tom Hanks never really transpired that way of course you know Tom Hanks is a flipping high bar to aim for but he didn't even come close but obviously the last few years it felt as if he was finally starting to build up a bit of steam T5K was absolutely popping off he was able to maybe somehow leverage a lot of that fame and interaction engagement um, of the podcast into his acting career or maybe the, the podcast helped his stand up whatever happened something definitely changed in his trajectory and suddenly he, st he was appearing on all these TV shows and then you know the pinnacle of his kind of ascent was when he got that small cameo role in The Joker where you saw him for a millisecond in a reflection of a mirror but still the fact that he was even associated and actually considered considered into that flipping film which was one of the most kind of important cultural movies of the time when it did come out is a good thing and it definitely goes to show all that work that he was doing was definitely rewarded in some way and then of course that whole thing came crashing down on the back of the allegations but you can't really get the violin out from too much because I still maintain Brian Callan dealt with the allegations probably the worst of anyone I've ever seen deal with his allegations right when he came out straight away and called it council culture when he came out straight away and said he was going to address the truth on his podcast you know then he didn't address the truth because Carson and decided to pull the plug on it because they're the ones that actually own that podcast and cut the checks which is ironic as well considering everything they've spoken about prior with Fox but hey we move on right he's completely ruined his entire entertainment and Hollywood career to the point now where he's just relying solely on the ability to appear as a guest on other shows and now slowly but surely he's decided to go back on T5K and now obviously he's doing the show with Sam Tripoli that's you know that's who's actually been one of his actual real friends in his whole debacle but hey we'll speak about that on the other time but anyway it's been really crazy to see that from the outside in as a kind of outside spectator to witness how all this stuff has just been you know it's just kind of all come crashing down around his feet just when he thought he was suddenly starting to get some way in it so anyway Tim Dillon decided to kind of break his silence and divulge some of the feelings that he feels around the whole situation and it's quite illuminating in that it kind of does show you how hard it can be for people to withstand the sort of cancellation pressure that exists even your friends it just puts them all in an awkward position because no one wants to be tarred with the same brush with whatever allegation you're being accused of regardless of how good your friend is you don't want to be known as whatever he's been accused of but you also want to be there for your friend but then you also want to look after your career but then you also want to make sure that you're standing up for something it's all a whole different conundrum going on there but anyway Tim Dillon let us know his thoughts we're going to play the clip now it's on Tim Dillon's Patreon so make sure you subscribe on there it's part of his bonus content bonus episode number 97 so if you haven't subscribed 
the video make sure to subscribe to tim dylan's patreon it's probably the best patreon out there from most of the la comics i subscribe to most ended most of my accounts most of my pledges with them because they're trash but definitely tim dylan's one is definitely one of the best so definitely subscribe to patreon.com for slash tim dylan to listen to the entire episode but this is the clip where he speaks directly about the whole brian callan situation somebody in comedy gets accused of rape and i know the person and i mean i don't know them well right like i didn't know brian callan super well He's always been relatively nice to me. Well, what are you, why are you laughing? He was no, accused, uh, he was he was accused, accused of, of rape. rape. I'm not making that no, up. No, I know, I know. I don't know what the hell happened in fucking 93 in an apartment building in wherever the hell. But I'm saying, when somebody asks me about that, I might make a little joke, get around it. I don't know anything about it. But here's what I'll say. I know people that know Brian that believe he did not do it. I know people that know him that go, I don't think he did this. I know people that know him who go, yeah, I could see that. But it's a weird position to be in because I know that this guy has kids and this is his career and it's life and it's been taken away with an article. And I don't have any information or facts about it. But I'm being asked to make a judgment on somebody. Often how I deal with that is a joke. And that's how they dealt with it. Mm -hmm. When I asked them that question about Elon, they go, I, you know, they said, I don't know, come rock it. I think that was a joke. Like they were like, right. I asked them a serious question about a serious thing and they answered it with a joke or by highlighting a joke that he had made. I get it. Truly. Because they may not know. They may have the same questions we have about that guy and be like, what the fuck is his deal? They may know. They may have strong feelings either way, but in, in my game, I can come out with those feelings and say what I want, and in their game, they can't. And in Kylan's case, I don't have strong feelings. Like, I don't. Like, to me, the idea of forcible rape is crazy. Mm. I know it happens. I'm not an idiot. But the idea that anybody would be continue to have sex with somebody when they were saying no, 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 it boggles my mind. I know it happens. And I know that people that are upstanding members of society do it. So that boggles my mind. It's also weird that a woman would go to these links to completely fabricate that story. Dare I say the truth is in the middle? Am I allowed to say? Am I allowed to say that there was an interaction that wasn't the best for ever? I don't know. I do not know. But when something like that happens, I will make a joke about it. I've made many jokes on the show, and the jokes are not a condemnation of people. I say people at the comedy store in jail, blah, blah, blah. That's funny. Mm -hmm. That also may be true soon. I don't know. No one knows. The reason I make the joke is because truly, gun to head, I don't know. Gun to head? I might, I don't know. It's weird. I could say I would say I believe her, gun to head, but I might be wrong. And I could also see a world where I don't believe her. I don't know. What I'm saying is that when those guys, when I'm talking about Elon, and they are kind of going into joke mode, I know what they're doing. They're kind of saying, hey, man, what the fuck do I know? It looks how it looks. And I've been in that position a little bit with people in the business where I go, hey, man, yeah, it looks the way it looks. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what to tell you other than the fact that, like, I know Ben. And if somebody said Ben raped me, I would be like, no fucking way. I don't know Brian that well. The Brian I knew... I'm stunned, shocking, crazy. Nice guy, not always the friendliest guy, but neither am I. No one's the friendliest. So I don't, you know, I get it a little bit in that position. But again, he's right, isn't he? It really is a hard situation to kind of be in the middle of, especially when you don't really know the person too well. But I still maintain, as I did in the beginning of the video, that Brian Callen did deal with this the worst out of anyone I've ever seen deal with any kind of these sort of allegations. But it does kind of maybe lend itself to the idea of comic 
sort of retribution because of how he dealt with Chris Lea's accusations you know he essentially threw Chris Lea under the bus went on the camera straight away and started crying alongside with uh, Brendan Schaub and you know decided to go on his Instagram and delete all the pictures of him and, and Chris Lea. and then when he was pressed and asked as to why he deleted his pictures he made some cockamoony lie about how he was trying to protect his teenage kids from the comments which just you know boggled the mind but hey who cares it really is a hard situation to be in if you're Brian Kellen because you know at the root of it these allegations are especially the rape allegations stems from what the 80s the 90s right it's a long time ago how can you prove unequivocally that that didn't happen and again you know people can say he's innocent until proven guilty which he is he definitely is innocent until proven guilty these crimes are all alleged there's no evidence to suggest that he actually did what he's being accused of doing but unfortunately in the world that we live in at the moment you have to find a way to defend yourself and prove unequivocally that the thing that you're being accused of you did not do especially when it involves something to do with sex something to do with women you just have to come out and defend yourself in no uncertain terms and kind of do away with the, any kind of suggestion or any kind of inkling that you could be the monster that they're painting you out to be there's just no way to get around it but unfortunately in the world we live in at the moment victims get the benefit of the doubt more so than the person that's being accused it's you know it's not fair it's not something that we'd obviously want but i'm a big believer in operating in the world as is and not as the world i want it to be i'd love for us to live in a world where you know you're innocent until proven guilty and you're kind of judged on the strength of your character maybe given the benefit of the doubt maybe in your strength of character you're kind of presumed innocent before the alleged crimes come out maybe there's some you know dare i say due process and this kind of things you would hope that would happen but unfortunately you know seeing how the world is at the moment it just isn't gonna go back anytime soon it might do in the future but as of now if you are accused of these kind of things you really do have to kind of mind your p's and q's and be very careful about the things that you say and how you basically approach these issues even if brian callan can prove unequivocally that these things didn't happen the damage is already done his career is in complete tatters right there's no really going back on this and a lot of these hollywood entertainment types and these networks and these production companies they're less kind of cancelling you as an actor or as an entertainer because of some morals or some ethics that they have and it's mostly because it's bad for business no one wants to be associated with brian callen because they know as soon as they kind of you know um, book him for a project or for a gig automatically all those old articles are suddenly going to be regurgitated again victims are going to suddenly be interviewed again victims might even new victims might even spring up again out of nowhere and no kind of media company or production company wants that on the back of them especially if they're spending millions and millions um to kind of get a film you know from inception to release the last thing that they need is their kind of investment going up in flames because they decided to hire some guy who has some very serious allegations around him that they can't disprove or prove happen in any way shape or form now obviously the other side thing about it kind of if you look at it from a brian callen point of view is more so his friends in comedy right for the most part the only person that's really stood next to brian callen throughout this entire situation publicly more so maybe outside of brendan Shaw, has been sam tripoli he really went out of his way to make sure that he kind of let it be known that he didn't believe the account of the victims of how they painted brian callen to be he thought the crimes were basically cockamoony and made up and he basically decided to put his career and his future on the line too by essentially doing a show with him right in their conspiracy social club thing that they got going on at the moment now of course brendan Shaw did similar sort of thing but you know his one's a bit weird because it seems like cast media are the ones that are really in charge of the t5k brand and operation and they were the ones that basically told brendan that he couldn't have brian Callen on the show because that would mean they couldn't get sponsors on the show and this is one thing we know about la comedians they love a good sponsor on their podcast isn't it so he was definitely wasn't going to risk that so he would you know he kind of you know told or they agreed behind closed doors that brian should take a time out and i guess the plan as brian brendan always says was to always bring back brian Callen after a period of time now of course if brian Callen's happy being a podcast guy and having the ability to make a living that way he's able to pay his bills doing that then fair play to him he's always going to have a platform to do that no problem but if he has any sort of aspirations of becoming a hollywood actor that's completely gone and that's all gone because of an allegation but the only other weird thing about this if you think about the allegations that kevin spacey was accused of and then you think of the stuff brian Callan was accused of the only thing differentiating them obviously minus the rape charge is their you know the genders right kevin spacey's one includes men brian Callan's accused women kevin spacey now i've heard supposedly is getting another you know big hollywood film that he's doing very very soon right so people have been able to kind of move on and allow kevin spacey to kind of re-enter and do what he wants in the hollywood entertainment industry or maybe the powers that be have kind of told him hey you can resume your career but brian cannon has no option and no route back into hollywood i just don't see it ever maybe unless some 
conservative sort of like anti cancel culture guy decides to kind of prop up a studio and hire Brian Callan to act in a movie or something cool but I don't ever see Brian Callan doing a Netflix TV series anytime soon that's never happening right he's never going to be on the main corporate kind of you know uh, broadcasting channels ever again and that's a real shame the only other thing as well that's kind of concerning as well about this whole thing is the lack of kind of support he's received from someone like a joe rogan again like i said joe rogan shouldn't really be expected to be coming out to fight anyone's battles but considering how vociferously he talks about stuff like cancel culture especially when it comes to stand-up comedians or people who live a quote-unquote unorthodox lifestyle it's very surprising that he hasn't said a peep about either crystalia or brian callum two people that he would consider to be quite close friends and maybe colleagues and you would imagine a platform like a Joe Rogan could be a good place to start with the conversation around counterculture and how we approach some of these allegations as a society. And if there is, if ever, some route back to redemption for the people that are accused of the crimes that they're accused of. But for some reason, it seems as if Joe Rogan is prevented from or is unwilling to get involved in that conversation whatsoever. And it's very, very, very surprising considering how close him and Brian Callan were. But I guess we have to be fair to him, right? If you sign a contract with Spotify for $100 million, you probably are going to be expected to keep stum when some of these allegations are levied against some of your closest friends, regardless of how much burning desire you have to kind of come out there and speak your truth you're probably going to be prevented to do so because you know you're going to void or possibly risk voiding the ability to kind of cash in that check when that time comes so it makes complete sense um let me know what your thoughts are regarding this clip with tim dylan and what he said um do you think there's a way back for brian callan can he reclaim his career in any way shape or form do you ever see him donning that attire that he wore in school or the goldbergs or do you think he's going to be banished to the land of podcasts and youtube videos forever and ever let me know what you think in the comments down below i'd love to know your thoughts and opinions peace out friends